Hello and a lovely, lovely morning once again from here and hope that each one of you are absolutely, absolutely fine. So coming back to the business end, as far as December 2022 paper is concerned, you must have noticed uh, that we have finished so far, I think, uh, question number one only. Now, if you look at this particular question, question number eight, you can easily manage, isn't it or not? As far as question number seven is concerned, you can manage it by yourself. And coming back to this particular question, that is 6B. Now, regarding this particular question of late, I have been virtually flooded up with several messages, to be very honest with you. Every day, almost 10 messages I am receiving, so please solve this particular question. And one student, Shreya actually, is her name, she sent me one, uh, her sold what we call mark sheet screenshot, wherein, in my opinion, she had had attempted the question in a perfect manner. But uh, to my amazement, I found that marks allotted to her were zero. And even I replied her that, uh, in my opinion, although I had a casual look at that time, actually, I was quite busy. So I just had a casual look. But I thought that it, she had uh, attempted the paper in a perfect manner. So I simply wrote her that, in my opinion, it is perfect answer. Uh, however, to, as I said, to my amazement, I found that marks were not allotted. So I was pretty uh surprised over that but anyway but later on i thought actually how come institute could have had committed such a big mistake so i again had a look over the that particular question then suddenly i found actually uh, that uh, the paper was not attempted the way it should be uh, attempted uh, that question was not attempted then i saw the question i tried hard uh, to be very honest with you it consumed near about he asked to solve this particular question. So you can imagine every day you keep on writing, sir, please solve that particular question. Please solve that particular question. You need to understand this particular point that I have to cater to several course needs of the several courses, uh, the demands of the several courses. And instead of praising the efforts, sometime when you are pressurize us, then it will become a little bit difficult for us. Anyway, I will I was talking about that particular question. So I then attempted the question. Then I found the answer, but in between, I happened to receive another message from Shreya. And this time, she had attempted the question the way it should have been. So, commendable effort to solve this particular question by oneself. I must say, it's a great feat. It is not easy for anyone to attempt this particular question. So, let's start with this particular one. Correct? <clears throat> and in this particular question, first of all, this is a share based payment question, of course, and we have done several questions in respect of that. India is 102, that is share based payment. 0107208. The very first, very first line is very important in this question because question start with this that 0172018. That means on this particular date, Amla, Giloy, and Tulsi Limited granted 100 options to each of his 2100 employees at the rate of rupees 60 and the market price was 200 so many times during my lectures i have already told you that as far as market price is concerned that is 200 that mean when we announced this particular scheme the market price was 200 and employees were told that they can buy these shares by paying only rupees 60 this 60 is known as exercise price and the difference between these two is known as concession discount or fair value as we call this is known as fair value of the option this is known as fair value of the option this is not known as fair value of the shares there is a slight difference between fair value of the options and fair value of the shares fair value of the shares means market price of the share whenever it will be written fair value of shares it means this is market value of the shares market price of the shares remember one thing and in this question uh, they played a tremendous trick by giving you fair value of shares and most of you thought actually that fair value of options is given and you attempted the question that way around to be very honest with you it is neither your fault no it is not anybody's fault but only those who looked at the question from a close eye they only they might be able to solve this question otherwise i doubt anyone could have had solved this particular question in the very first attempt correct including myself so, fair value of the share, but to be very honest, when I attempted the question first time, I was able to solve it. But 
uh, I had a hint that this question contains some what we call uh, disguised information. So fair value of the share is nothing but market value of the share. And in this question, further the question states that, that the vesting date is 31st of March 2021. Now, problem is that the moment we read about the vesting date, we start what we call do the computation in terms of years. For example, 18, 19, so 19, 20, second year and 2021, 20, we immediately frame <coughs> a time period of three years. So in this question, question has announced the scheme on 1-7-2018. You need to understand this. And then exercise date is 31st of March 2022. After the vesting period, we have one year to exercise uh, or not. At the end of year one, now the question states that the company found that 100 employees had left the organization. Well, at the end of year one, 100 employees left the organization and fair value of share. This is the point actually I just wanted to bring to your notice. In this question, fair value of option is not given. It is fair value of shares is given. Fair value of shares. And just to confuse more, they have added fair value of shares issued under employee stock option plan was 93 so you have to exercise tremendous amount of care and caution in this particular question that this is actually not the fair value because when we say fair value it means it is the difference between market price and the what we call exercise price and it is related to option but here it is fair value of shares issued is given so it means this is the market value of the share is given so you will have to compute the fair value at the end of the first year. It is not given in this question. How will you compute? I just told you in order to compute the fair value, we subtract from the market price, the exercise price and the market price is 93 at the end of the first year. And as you know, 60 is given to you as exercise price. So your 23, 23 will become your fair value of the option. So this is the uh, play card this is the tricks where trick which they have played in this particular question and so many us actually got tricked by this particular trick of the institute wonderful wonderful question to be very honest with you every time you cannot criticize them sometimes they come out with wonderful question they need to get praise but my only request is that they have to frame the question in such a manner so that entire paper can be attempted within a vicinity of three hours at the end of the two years now at the end of the two years company found that 80 employees had left okay fine then fair value at the end of second year, fair value of share is given at 104. That means at the end of second year, what will be my fair value? I will have to compute because fair value of share means market value and exercise price is 60. So 44 will become your fair value at the end of the first uh, second year. Correct. So in this question, this is this is the only thing which most of us escaped and that is why we got wrong answer. But now we will get the correct answer in this particular question. At the end of the third year, the company found that 192 employees had left. So at the end of the third year, further it is given to you, fair value of the share is 80. So you will write 80, you will subtract 60 exercise price. So now you have found out the fair values at the end of the first year, 23, at the end of the second year, 44 and 20. So this is your question. I have solved this question and got the right answer. And further, one more thing in this particular question is given that only 1,700 employees exercise the option on 31st of March, 2022. Correct. So let's see. And further in this question, it is given that face value of the share is this much. And I have solved this question and how much time it takes, you cannot actually imagine. Problem is this, because you are getting the entire thing within 30, 40 minutes. But for that, we need to spend nearly four to five hours. Where is question number? Right. This is 6B. I have solved this question for you because this question I have typed, printed. So this sheet I may be able to actually share with you. So just let me actually put it this way around so that you are able to see it clearly. Okay, first pay attention over here. Question number 6B analysis. The question starts on 1-7-2018 I told you. Obviously, your first year will end where? Your first year will end over here. That is 31st of 3, 2019. Then your second year, first of all, you write this way. Second year will end on 31st of 3, 2020. And 31st of 3, 2021. This is your third year end. And this is the date on which vesting period will end. 
and after this 31st 3 2022 is your exercise date however we are more concerned with this particular period which starts from here and ends over here correct in this question the first thing which you need to compute is this that because the scheme was announced on 1 7 2018 how much period will get elapsed by the end of the first year nine months period only and when you will similarly you compute from the grant date till the end of the second year 21 months because nine months was the first year and next 12 months so it will be 21 21 month period and by the time we will reach the end of the third year of course now 33 months will get elapsed 33 months will get elapsed that means vesting period need to be taken care of that means the entire expenditure entire process or entire story is related to 33 months period not three years in this particular question first of all you need to understand this so your vesting period happens to be 33 months correct now let's have a look over here on the grant date it was given in the question that there are 2100 employees and each employee is being given 100 options now I told you that in this question the foremost task and the most important prominent and significant part of this particular question is how you are able to compute what we call fair value because in the question fair value of share is given fair value of option is not given correct so fair value of share always symptomize that market value of share is given so at the end of the first year fair value of share or market value of share is 93 minus 60 so we are it is actually 23 or 33. I think it is 33 I wrote earlier 23 it is 33 anyway whatever it is sometime it happens so 93 minus 60 is equal to 33 and in the, at the end of the second year market price or fair value of share is 104 and 60 is exercise price so this will become our what we call fair value fair value represents the difference between the market value of the share and the exercise price likewise at the end of the uh, vesting period or the at the end of the third year fair market price is 80 60 is your exercise price 20 will be this we have been also delivered information that at the end of the first year 100 employees left at the end of the second year again 80 and then 192 at the end of the third year so now because you have been able to understand the basic thing of this particular question i don't think any one of you now will confront any sort of problem in getting the solution okay should i solve it further or explain it further okay i will here it is given at the end of the first year. Now I will have to compute the expenses. So two, as we normally do, we normally adopt this particular procedure. 2100 is the number of employees in the beginning. 100 employees have left at the end of the first year. So 2000 into 100, that will, that will be multiplied with fair value of the option 33. So total expenditure for 33 months because your entire vesting period is 33 months. This is 66 lakh coming to and then we will compute the proportion the proportion out of 33 months of the first year is 9 months so 9 divided by 33 will give us 18 lakh so that means cumulative expenses recognized at the end of the first year will be 18 lakh and previously recognized is zero so obviously in this in the current year i am going to recognize 18 lakh worth of expenses we move over to the second year in the beginning of the second year, you can straight away write 2000 employees, but I have written 2100 minus 100 employees. That means in the beginning of the second year, we had 2000 employees, 80 more left. Multiply it with 100 options because you are going to give. And very importantly, in the second year, as you can see, we have 44 as the fair value. So when we reached the end of the second year, we found that our expenses for 33 months should have been actually 84,48,000 so by the time by the end of the second year because by the time we will reach the end of the second year 21 months must have expired so 21 divided by 33 will give you 53 lakh 76 thousand it means actually by the end of the second year you should have recognized 53 lakh 76 thousand as your amount however out of this 18 lakh uh, have already been recognized so in the second year you are going to recognize 35 lakh 76 thousand correct is it clear to you Likewise, when you will reach this beginning of the third year, so total number of employees at this moment is 2100 minus 100 minus 80 and further 192 employees left the organization, multiply it with 100, correct? Now the fair value as we just saw is 80 minus 20 because fair value of the share at the end of the third year is 80 and 60 happens to be your exercise price 20. So multiply it with 34,56,000. What does this mean? It means in the three years period of time not exactly three years 33 months period of time the expenses should have been booked 34 lakh 56 thousand that means by the end of the third year our organization should have had booked 
expenses to the extent of 34 lakh 56 thousand but out of that we have already booked 53 lakh 76 thousand worth of expenditure if you will add these two it will be equal to 53 lakh 76 thousand that mean in the final year i will have to reverse the expenses that mean i will have to de-recognize this much of expenses 19 lakh 20 thousand is it clear to you or not there is another question related to this particular question now we have seen if I will compute 2100 minus 100 minus 80 minus 192, I think it will be equal to 1728 employees. 1728 employees. That means by the time we reach the end of the vesting period, 1728 employees completed their scheme. Correct? I haven't shown here, but 2100 minus 100 minus 80 minus 192 will give you 1728. Correct? 1728 but problem is that out of 1728 who completed the scheme only out of that 1700 employees exercise the option so 28 option it means have lapsed or forfeited now what is the value of 28 option which have been forfeited suppose if this these 28 employees would have been delivered the option how many options we would have delivered them 100 correct into at the rate of 20 because 20 is the fair value at the end of the third year so this will show you the value of what we call options forfeited so this is how you are going to get the answer to this particular question i told you it's a pretty pretty interesting uh, question no doubt about it i must admire if a question is really testing the um, organization the uh, student and so institute or your organization need to be complimented for this i need such sort of questions rather than what we go long lengthy unnecessarily and which are really uh, against the very purpose of India. Uh, so it will be better for long questions institute should give questions from India that is especially consolidation and India 103 so now b part is over six b part is over we come to now question number six a part now, as far as 6th A part is concerned, again, this particular question is, I think, from valuation of shares. Looks, this question is straight out of our material. To be very honest with you, I think this particular question is in our lectures and in our material both. Allow me to have a sip of tea. Now, given below are the extracts of the balance sheet of Bharat and Sheena Limited. Bharat and Sheena Limited on 31st of March 2022. So equity share capital is 80 lakh, one share is of 10 each, question is not very tough, 12% preference share is 20 lakh, then reserves and surplus, 10% debentures and current liability as far as your liability side is concerned. So these are the five items. Coming to what we call your asset side, these four items are given, goodwill, tangible fixed asset 120 lakhs, trade investment, now investments are trade, what trade is written that's fine. Why I am telling you, because if you remember, so many times I have told you, whenever we need to compute capital employed for the purpose of goodwill. So many times, even during what we call discussion under India 103, actually I talked about this particular fact. That whenever we need to compute capital employed for the purpose of valuation of goodwill, we never consider goodwill as part of capital employed. We never consider non-trade investment as part of good, part of what we call capital employed. And besides that, non-operating assets. Non-operating assets means like land and building purchased for sale. Suppose we have a plot of land and we are not using it for business purpose. We are simply holding upon it to actually dispose it of further, say after four or five years, then quite obviously it cannot be termed as operating asset. Similarly, work in progress. So such assets are generally not included as part of capital employed whenever we compute goodwill. Correct? However, in this question, you have been given trade investment. What we mean by trade investment? Do you know? Sometime when later on you are going to attend the interviews of big companies, so many times I have seen actually that this question is tossed up before the student, but hardly any student I have seen coming out with a what we call correct and appropriate answer. Trade investment means generally, what is trade investment? When I am investing in other company with the, with the intention to promote my business, then it is known as trade investments. This is the perfect meaning of trade investment. Anyway, we come back to come back here. So in this case, goodwill 8 lakh, 120 lakh tangible fixed asset, 20 lakh trade investment and 52 lakh current asset is given to you. In this question, you have been given, please pay attention, profits after tax of 40%. Profit after tax is given to you, 2019-20 it is 24 lakh, then 36 lakh and 30 lakh. 
whenever you are given profit after tax it is always better to convert them into before tax and i have so many times talked talked about this particular fact that how can you do so for example if you will divide the profit after tax by one minus tax rate then easily you can get what we call profit before tax quickly quickly you can easily get correct and then question also says that trade investments are valued at 150 percent of the face value 150 actually this item trade investment which is written here this item reflects the cost cost means the amount which you must have spent in acquiring these assets indirectly it also means that face value of the trade investment is equal to 16 lakhs so now question indirectly tells you that as far as trade investments are concerned its value its market value is 150 percent so i will compute 150 percent of 16 lakh to know the market value or revised value of the trade investment correct question also states in this particular question that 60 percent of the debentures are redeemed prior to the valuation of the shares prior to the valuation of the share indirectly it seems in this question i may have to compute the goodwill correct and we have to value the shares also so 60 percent of the debentures are redeemed prior to the valuation of the uh, shares what does it mean it means we had 40 lakh we had 40 lakh worth of debentures and i will redeem 60 percent of it if i will redeem 60 percent 60 percent will be equal to 24 lakh 24 minus 40 lakh will be equal to i think 16 lakh correct so 16 lakh debentures will be there when i when i am going to compute valuation when i will do valuation of share rate of income tax with effect from 1st april 2022 will be 30 percent what does it mean that mean in order to compute your future maintainable profits you may need actually 30 percent normal rate of return now see here normal rate of normally when it is given normal rate of return normally it means normal rate of return on capital employed or net assets but here it is clearly written clearly written normal rate of return on net assets for equity shareholder normal rate of return is based upon net assets available for equity share and now further question says that goodwill is to be valued at three years purchase so i have solved this question and quickly you can have a look over here it will definitely help me in assessing the question quick in a quick and fast manner where is it this much of typing i had to do yes under this particular question first of all what you need to do first of all your first target should be to compute profit before tax why we have to compute profit before tax because ultimately now i will have to subtract the taxation at the rate of 30 percent so first of all profits after tax is given 24 lakh 36 lakh and 30 lakh correct i just told you how can you find out profit before tax don't look at here at this moment look over here so in order to compute profit before tax i will divide profit after tax one minus tax rate present tax rate is 0 0.40 so present take the tax rate is 1 minus 0 0.40 so 24 lakh divided by 1 minus 0 0.40 means 1 minus 0 0.40 will be equal to 0 0.60 so if i will divide 24 lakh by 0 0.60 i will get the profit before tax and that is 40 lakh so if profit before tax is 40 lakhs then profit after tax is 24 quite obviously tax rate taxation must be 16 lakh but we are not concerned with it similarly i will compute profit before tax for 2021 and 21 22 now i want to compute profits available for equity share for that i will take the average profit of all these three profits 40 lakh 60 lakh 3 lakh average profit will be equal to 50 lakh now in this question you have to be careful careful in the sense because interest on 60% debenture you will have to add say 40 lakh into 60% that is 24 lakh I just told you if you will subtract 24 lakh from 40 lakh you will be left up with 16 lakh so 10% of 16 lakh is equal to 2 lakh 40,000 is it clear to you so 2 lakh 40,000 worth of interest we are going to add but why we are going to add it the point is this next question the reason is that interest on debenture if I am going to because i am redeeming 24 lakh worth of debenture now if 24 lakh worth of debentures have been redeemed the interest which i must have paid to them will no longer be required to pay it 
because if there will be no debenture, 24 lakh worth of debenture will not be there, so no need to pay interest to them. So that is the reason whatever interest I must have paid to them, I will add it back. 2 lakh 40 thousand will be added back. So it is known as now you have adjusted profit. Now see here from the adjusted profit, I have subtracted 30 percent. So I will subtract 30 percent of 52 lakh 42 thousand because now the future tax rate is 30 percent. Correct. So 15 lakh 72. Now this is profits for shareholder or future maintainable or future maintainable profits. You may say so. So profits for shareholders is 36 lakh 68 thousand. But in this question, you have preference share capital also. So let's and preference share capital is 20 lakh and their rate of dividend is 12 percent. So out of profits, I will have to obviously pay to the preference shareholder first 2 lakh 40 thousand. So profits for equity shareholder. Actually, profits for equity shareholder is nothing but future maintainable profits which will be available for equity shareholder 34 lakh 28 thousand. Now, one of the demand of this particular question is that we have to find out valuation of share by yield method. In order to compute the valuation of share by yield method, what we do? We compute the profits available for shareholder and divide it by normal rate of return. Correct? So, this gives us the capitalized value. That means we have to find out the capitalized value. So, capitalized value is 342,80,000. What we mean by capitalized value? So many times I have already talked about this particular fact. Capitalized value simply shows the market value of your capital, capital employed. So, whatever your actual capital employed, irrespective of that, your capital has a market value of 342,82,000 divided by number of shares. This will give you what we call on the basis of yield, the valuation of share is 42.85. It is also known as earning per share, correct? In this case, because we have computed on yield basis, return basis, so, so this is also known as earning per share 42.85. Now, in this question, we need to find out goodwill also. One of the question is related to goodwill. So, in order to find out the goodwill, first of all, I will compute profits available for equity shares, that is 34,28,000, which we computed earlier. 34,28,000 profit we have already computed earlier. And from here, now I will have to subtract normal profit. Now, normal profit basically means capital employed into normal rate of return. Remember one thing, now you have to compute the capital employed for the purpose of goodwill. So, for the purpose of goodwill, I will compute the capital employed. Tangible fixed asset is 128 lakh given to us. And I just told you, trade investment will be considered. However, if there would have been non-trade investment, I would not have had taken them for the purpose of valuation of goodwill. Now, I told you, question stated that the value of trade investment is 150% of the face value. Face value is 16 lakh. You will take, you multiply it with 150%. So, I think it will be equal to 24 lakh. Then current asset 52 lakh and see here, I have subtracted 24 lakh. Why I have subtracted 24 lakh? Because in between we have done redemption of debenture to the extent of 24 lakh. Out of 40 lakh, 24 lakh worth of redemption of debenture has taken place. So current asset will get reduced by 24 lakh because we must have paid them cash. Now from this, these amount, we will subtract 10% debenture. Now debentures will be equal to 16 lakh. Actually, I have written 24 lakh. It should be 16 lakh. It is 16 lakh, correct? 20, 40 lakh minus 24 lakh, 16 lakh. Then your current liability is 20 lakh. So by adding all these items and subtracting 16 lakh and 20 lakh, you will get what we call current asset, net, sorry, net asset to the extent of 136 lakh. From that, you will have to subtract preference share capital because in this question, normal rate of return is not based upon net assets. It is based upon net assets available for equity shares. So that is why I will have to find assets available for equity shares. So by subtracting what we call preference share capital, we, we shall get assets available for equity share. I will multiply it with normal rate of profit that is 10%. So finally, I will get normal profit 11,60. You will separate 11,60,000 from 34,28,000 and then super profits will be this much. You multiply it with three or goodwill will be equal to 68,4,000. One more question which is asked is that <clears throat> we have to do, we have to find out intrinsic value of the share also. As you know, in order to find out intrinsic value of share, what we have to do? We simply have to take into account total net assets. Now, we have already seen that assets is 116 lakh for equity shares. 
because when we do valuation of share we we consider both non trade investment and goodwill also in this question there is no non trade investment but now goodwill which we have found out will be added back so now total assets available for equity shareholder will be 184,4000 divided by number of shares so 23.005 will become your intrinsic value and question has also asked what is the fair value so intrinsic value plus fair value divided by 2 get the average that will be equal to your what we call uh, fair value. So this is how you are going to solve this particular question. First of all, profit before tax. You need to find out. Once you have found out profit before tax, simply take the average, add the interest. It will be adjusted profit. Subtract 30% tax rate. Get the what we call profits for shareholders. Subtract preference dividend. You will get profits available for equity shares. Then compute the capitalized value by dividing it by 98% divided by number of share to get intrinsic value of share correct that is share valuation of share on yield basis now you know find out the goodwill you have to find out net assets perfectly you have to take care of the fact that how much amount of debenture you will take and how much amount of investment you will consider and then multiply it with 10 percent to get normal profit this is how you are going to get super profits and then finally what we call goodwill once the goodwill is found simply add to the net assets available for equity shareholder that will give you assets available for equity shares divided by number of shares this is how you are going to do this particular question so after having done these two questions correct this was question number six now this is question number fifth i have already solved this question to be very honest with you i know each one of you are very much interested that i should do this question right now but so many printing mistakes are there that doesn't look very nice every time to talk every day day in out day out and there is no use that to provide a student with such a testing and torturing question to be very honest with you it is a pretty long question you can see how much solution this much of length it has consumed question number fifth i have already solved and i will share it with you actually there is hardly any for anything for me to actually discuss because recently actually i have uh, you must have noticed the, uh, taken consolidation but still i will discuss it but first let me discuss the questions which i can finish it in a quick time so two barring two questions rest of the paper is okay but question however choice was given in the question you could have skipped these two questions but point is not that even though if exam institute wants to test they should now actually toss the question from india s 103 and india s 110 rather than resorting to as 21 and as 14 time and again that doesn't look nice now we come back to which question actually i think till up to last time this is the question paper. Let me have a look over here. December 2000. Okay. This is section B answer any. Where the question is. So in the last session, I think we had finished till up to question of, I think first part we had finished, isn't it or not? Now, we come back to second part. Now in the second part, I solve this question again for you to be very honest with you. Second part also, second part A, second part, this is the problem we time and again face. Part second and it has got various parts, again one mistake is there that is the reason your answer will be so that is the problem because institute has committed some mistakes honestly speaking uh, in answering otherwise questions is okay question is fine this question has no problem and question number two i will solve it for you too and uh, then question number three first we take up all these questions and if time permits then we will finish it finish it up in the next session correct because if I will start with holding, it will consume a lot of time now. This is your 
सेकेंड क्वेश्चन पार्ट ए सेकेंड क्वेश्चन पार्ट ए सिंपली हैव ए लुक ओवर द सोल्यूशन देर इज नो नीड टू एक्चुअली गो थ्रू द क्वेश्चन इन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट इज रिलेटेड टू ए एस नाइन करेक्ट सिमिलर क्वेश्चन वॉज आस्ट इन दिसंबर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन पेपर सो इन द फर्स्ट केस आई विल रिकग्नाइज वन लैक बिकॉज एज यू नो द डिलीवरी वॉज रिक्वेस्टेड बाय द बायर सो इवन दो वी सप्लाइड दम गुड्स इन द मंथ ऑफ अप्रैल डेट इज आफ्टर द एंड ऑफ द करेंट ईयर सो इवन दो वी शेल रिकग्नाइज वन लैक इन द करेंट ईयर इन दिस सेकेंड केस आउट ऑफ टू लैक्स सिक्सटी परसेंट गुड्स हैव बीन सोल्ड आउट आई थिंक सो वन लैक ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड आई एम गोइंग टू रिकग्नाइज इन दर्ड केस प्लीज पे अटेंशन द थर्ड केस वॉज दैट ऑन फिफ्टीन ऑफ टू टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू गुड्स वेर सेंट टू अग्नि an approval period will end because he was given an approval period of 1 month or something like this so approval period will end on 15 of 3 2015 so in the question approval period i think is 1 month something like this so if i have sent the goods 15 to on 15 on 15th of february 2022 to agni the approval period will end on 15 of 3 2015 the question is stated that just prior to the approval period the approval period will end on 15 of 3 2015 got approval on 10 3 2015 that means 5 days before the end of the approval period approval was given with respect to 75% of the goods so 3 lakh into 75% 2 lakh 25000 i am going to recognize no doubt about it i will recognize it but no approval was received with respect to the remaining so if you are not going to receive any approval even in that case the remaining portion will be considered as part of revenue so that mean total revenue recognized will be 2 lakh 25 plus 75 that is 3 lakh which i have written with red pen is it clear to you in case of goods sent to agni now in case number 3 which is given to you actually goods are supplied to two persons one agni and another one is vayu on 15 of 3 15th of march 2022 goods sent to vayu and approval period Ends on fifteen four two thousand twenty two. One month approval period was given to him, so approval period will end in the next month. No doubt about that. Question says that sixty percent of four lakh, that is two lakh forty thousand. Sixty percent of four lakh. Actually, I for forgotten what is the sixty percent of four lakh. So I will have to look into the question. Now, question paper is pretty far away, so that is the only problem. right uh, yes this is this was the question 70 60% actually what why you did why you we send the goods to why you and why you limited placed 60% of the goods to get financial help for one month suppose suppose if i have sent goods to you and you have placed it to somebody indirectly it means now you have accepted these goods otherwise you couldn't have placed it to anyone so that is the reason 60% of 4 lakh worth of goods will be considered as sold correct or approved or it or you will presume as if the approval these goods have been which were sent on approval basis so approval has been accepted that means these goods have been accepted 60% you will recognize but at the same time no approval or disapproval is remain for remaining goods problem is that in this question as far as remaining goods are concerned as far as remaining goods are concerned you did not receive any approval but problem is that you haven't you haven't reached the what we call expiry date expiry date means when the approval period will end approval period will end in the month of april and you are at the end of 31st of march so that is the reason in this case remaining goods will not be recognized as revenue however the moment you are going to cross 15th march and in that case if you didn't receive any what we call approval then you can recognize those goods as revenue so 40% nothing will be recognized as revenue as approval period ends next year this is the point here which you need to understand in the fourth case it is considered as financing transaction 5 lakh worth of goods have been sold at a profit profit on cost will be equal to 1 by 4 so 6 lakh 25000 will be profit it will be a financing transaction because seller has agreed to take back the goods so that is the reason you will not consider this as a part of revenue now in the fourth case what is happening 
In case of advertising revenue, as I told you while explaining this number 2021 paper, that when ads are released, then only you are going to recognize the revenue. In this question, what is happening? You purchase rights for 800 lakhs. You purchase rights for 800 lakhs and you got advertisements worth rupees 1200. So 1200 worth of advertisements you received. So this is your revenue, no doubt about it. So 300 lakhs will be recognized in the, in the month of March 2022. Reason being is that 25% of the ads will be placed in the month of March 2022, while remaining 900 you will recognize in the next year because in the remaining will be released in the month of April 2022. So in the current year you will recognize 300 lakhs. Now honestly speaking, if I am going to add all these revenue, 1 lakh, 1 lakh 20, 3 lakh, 2 lakh 40, and 300 lakhs my answer will be 307 lakh six, 307 lakh six, 60 thousand but answer given in the question revenue recognition is 107 lakh 60 thousand why actually question should have asked what is the profit because your profit is 107 lakh 60 thousand how come my profit is 107 lakh 60 thousand revenue is this much there is a difference between revenue and profit your revenue actually is 300. This is the mistake committed by institute. They should have asked how much profit would be recognized. Your profit will come to 107,60,000. How? Because as I told you, in order to get the advertisement rights, we spent 800 lakhs. We spent 800 lakhs. Correct? And I told you out of this 1,200 revenue which we are going to receive, 25% revenue we are going to receive in the month of March and in the month of April 900. So if I want to know my revenue, my profit, the 800 worth of cost which I spent, 800 worth, 800 lakh worth of cost, I will take 25% of it, the 25% will become 200 and here it will become 600. Logically my profit in the month of May on account of advertisement will be 100 lakhs. So if I would have taken 100 lakhs, then my answer would have been same which is given in the module. But the problem is that they have simply given answer revenue. They shouldn't have used the word revenue. They should have used the word profit. If they want to use the word revenue, then answer should have been 307 lakh 60 thousand. However, profit will be this much. Is it clear to you? So these things I have to explain all. now. Next question also, you can manage it by yourself. But still, I will explain it. Still, I will explain it. So, we have done part 2A, part 2B. Now, we are picking up. Part 2B is not tough, to be very honest with you. It is not tough at all. Part B. It is similar to the question which again we did under December 2021. Aloe Vera Ginger Tulsi Limited uh, uh, is the company. And in 2019-20, it is given to you that they have incurred some expenditure on this on a particular process and a amount of expenditure is 100 lakhs, of which 44 lakhs have been incurred before 1st December 2099. When the production process met the criteria for recognition as an intangible asset, that mean in the in 2019 and 20, out of 100 lakh, 44 lakh, which is spent, which I spent prior to uh, prior to the fact that this production process met the asset recognition criteria, so 44 lakh will be debited to profit and loss account, and by the end of the year. We will recognize an intangible asset, 100 minus 44 to the extent of 56 lakh. Is it clear to you or not? Why we will recognize an intangible asset? Because it has met the asset recognition criteria. Now, in 2020-21, we spent further 400 lakh rupees. So, now the cost of this asset will be 56 plus 400. Once the asset is recognized, then whatever amount you spent in development of that particular asset, it must be capitalized. So 456 lakh now the, at the end of 2021, this particular item will get reflected. This intangible asset will get reflected. Then in 2020-21, question says that in 2020-21, that means 1-4-2021, it will end on 31st of 3-2022. 
from 1st April 2021 company implemented this intangible asset. So cost of this asset is 456 lakhs. Now question says that when we will when we will implement this asset, it will result in savings of 100 lakhs per annum. That means and for the next five years, that means this particular process will help us generating revenues for the next five years. For the next five years. How it will help us? And my cash flows, because savings are nothing but class cash flows for you. 100 lakh, 100 lakh, 100 lakh. Each year you are going to receive on account of this particular asset. So total. And then question has also given you present value factor cost of the capital is 10 percent and present value factor for fi for five years so this time you have been given factor 3.79 so what i can do i can simply multiply 100 with 3.79 to get the present value of cash flow this present value of cash flow is equal to 379 actually standard says that when you are going to implement the asset the asset should be logically recognized at should be logically recognized at cost or recoverable amount whichever is lower and what is your recoverable amount recoverable amount is value in use and what is value in use which we have found out this is value in use this asset will bring value to us for five years and their present value is equal to 379 so it means I will recognize this asset on this particular date at this value 379 and the difference between 456 and 379 will be debited to profit and loss account. Now I've, I have recognized this asset at 379. Question has also asked another question. At the end of the year, how much amount you are going to amortize? So 379, this asset will give you returns for five years. So each year you are going to amortize this much of amount. This is how the solution will run like. I will show you the solution. I have done the solution. See. Pay attention here. In 2019 and 20, 40, 44 lakhs incurred prior to 1 1 2019 shall be expensed or debited to profit and loss account as I just talked about. Balance 100 minus 44 lakh will be reflected as what we call intangible asset. Now 2021. At the end of 31st 3 2021, I told you now this particular asset will be recognized 56 lakh plus the amount which you spent in this year for 400 lakh at 456 lakh. And now coming back to 2021-22, as at 1-4-2022, intangible asset will be recognized at lower of cost or recoverable amount. Recoverable amount means value in use. Value in use is present value of cash flows and present value of cash flows is 379 lakh. Correct? So cost is 456, recoverable amount is 379. So 77 lakh will be treated as impairment loss and it will be debited to profit and loss account. And amount of amortization, I told you, because now you have recognized the asset at the beginning at 379. And when you will reach the end of the year, you will divide it five to know what amount you are going to amortize. And question has also asked, what is the carrying amount at the end of 31st, 2020? So 379 minus 75.80, whatever value you will get, that will become your carrying value. Is it clear to you or not? Besides that, in this particular question, there is another question, part C. As far as question number one is concerned, that is over. Question number second, all the parts now will be over. In part C, just pay attention. In part C. Actually, again, this question is available under AS19 notes. I think this is question number 13 or 14. Correct? Same question, same figures. B Limited acquired a machinery on lease from A Limited. And the information given to you so b limited has acquired so b limited is lessee correct lease term is five year annual lease rental given to you at the end of the year is five lakh guaranteed residual value one lakh expected residual value two lakh and expected return is given to you 15 percent and in the question which is given to you even their present values are also given because i have simply copied it from my notes actually in the suggested answer you have been also given the present value of year 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Correct? Question also says that pass entries 
uh, in the books of lessee in the first year also prepare the balance sheet for the first year depreciation is provided on a straight line method at the rate of 10 percent now first of all in the books of the lessee we know that if lessee will take an asset he will recognize the asset either at present value correct or at cost so we will have to compute the present value so in order to compute the present value of minimum lease payment so many times i have already told you first i will write the years then i will write the lease rentals or lease payment in the sixth year because there is guaranteed residual value one lakh so in the sixth year lease rentals from my side from the lessee's side it will be equal to six lakh discount factors are given in the question and in the suggested answers you multiply it with that so your present value is 17 lakh 25820 and it is less than 20 lakh cost so you are going to recognize the asset at this particular value 17 lakh 25820 now how you are going to pass the entry your first entry will be machinery account debit you have received the machinery or you can simply write machinery on finance lease account debit to lease liability account because this much of payment you are supposed to make against this lease then because in case of finance lease generally lessee will treat himself as the real owner real owner of the goods and he will provide the depreciation so you are going to provide the depreciation you will take 17 lakh 25820 and your depreciation rate is 10 percent so you will also uh, what we could charge the depreciation now the important point is that at the end of the first year you will make the payment bank account 5 lakh you will make this payment 5 lakh but question is that when you are going to make the payment every year you will pay something for interest and something for the principal amount so how much you are paying for the principal amount that is against the liability and how much finance charge how will you come to know because you have recognized the liability in the first year as sorry your total liability is 17 lakh 25820 is it clear to you now you will have to 17 lakh 25820 is your lease liability and rate of interest is given to us as 15 percent or whatever in this particular question i think it was uh 15 percent so i will compute 15 percent of this amount correct so that means it will become my interest I will compute 15% of this amount at the end of the first year that means whatever payment I am paying, I am paying 5 lakh, uh, it comprises of what we call interest of this much. You subtract this figure from this one, you will come to know what amount you have paid against the lease liability. So this is how you are going to pass the entry and then whatever depreciation you have written off and whatever finance charges you have paid can be written off to profit and loss account. This, is the, this will be the entry in the first year. Secondly question has also asked that how in the balance sheet it will be reflected in the books of lessee lessee will reflect two things one under long term borrowings his total liability is 17 lakh 25820 and out of this liability he has paid only this much 2 lakh 41127 actually this is 241127 you subtract so this much of liabilities is still remaining is it clear to you then similarly the asset which we have got, we will reflect it in our book as PPE on lease under non-current asset and we will charge the depreciation, this will be the value. This is how lessee is going to reflect it. Coming back to the books of the lesser, as far as lesser is concerned, at what value? If you remember, I have already told you so many times that as far as lesser is concerned, he will recognize the asset in, in his books at net as at net investment and what is net investment in order to compute net investment first of all you need to know the meaning of gross investment these two figures these two terms are vital from the perspective of the lesser gross investment means basically lease rental plus gross plus guaranteed uh, value plus unguaranteed residual value plus plus nothing this is total amount is known as gross investment and if i will take the present value of all these three things it will be called net net investment actually net investment is nothing but present value of gross investment see here in the books of lesser calculation of actually question is also asked unearned finance income anyway first we have a look over here 
stretch a table till up to five years. Now you consider yourself as the owner. You are going to receive five lakh, five lakh, five lakh for the first four year. In the fifth year, you are going to receive five lakh. 1 lakh as guaranteed residual value and unguaranteed residual value is 1 lakh. Unguaranteed residual value is 1 lakh, total 7 lakh you are going to receive. This is the absolute amount which you are receiving. In fact, this is nothing but this is your gross investment. How it is gross investment? Because I have added lease rentals, I have added uh, guaranteed residual value and unguaranteed residual value. So in absolute terms, we are receiving 27 lakh. But we are more concerned with the present value. So I will multiply with the present value factors and now I will get 17,75,540. Actually this 17,75,540 is nothing but this is the present value of your gross investment. So this will be considered as your net investment. And the difference between the gross investment and net investment is known as unearned finance income. So your unearned finance, finance income will be this much. Now, what entry lesser is going to pass? See here, lesser has given the asset to, to the lessee, lessee account debit or simply you can write lessee account debit to asset on finance lease. So this much of asset because he will recognize the asset he, which he has given on lease correct at net investment and he is debiting lessee instead you can simply write receivables account. Correct, because I told you while explaining accounting standard AS 19 that lesser will de-recognize his asset and recognize a new asset in the form of receivable. The new asset in the form of receivable is nothing but amount which he has to receive from lessee. So he will receive 5 lakh and then he will compute the finance income 15% of this amount. So out of 5 lakh, the first installment which he will receive, he will consider 2,66,320 as finance income. And this much amount he will presume that he has received from lessee. And finance income he will credit to profit and loss account. And in the balance sheet, 17,75,540 he had to receive from the lessee. And he has received 2,33,680. So at this value it will appear. Is it clear to you or not? So these are the three questions which have been asked. Now two more questions remaining. And I have already solved, I have already told you, I have solved this question, but they will consume a bit of time to explain. So you can see the length and breadth of this question. But I wish that such questions should not be asked. But anyway, since it has been asked, I have to explain. So in the next session, I will finish this particular uh, chapter, uh, sorry, this particular paper. And after that, please don't force me to solve any other question. Although, one question remaining of holding company of that chapter, in the next session, I will explain that also. And the last question also, I will explain. I forgot that I didn't attempt the last question. I think the last question was something related to case study. I will attempt that question. So one holding question and last question of December 2021 and holding company question of this paper, I will explain in the next session. Correct? So till then time, it's a very lovely, lovely goodbye from here.